Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and friends, and most of you are both, I hope. Some of you are just perhaps listening in and perhaps were uh, attracted by the title and you're wondering what is this guy all about. Well, the guy is Stan Houston, and uh, I have a story for you today, and it begins this way. As the man pleaded his case, Father Maximilian Colby came forward and offered his life for the one pleading. The German commandant of Auschwitz, probably rather shocked, agreed. And Colby, with nine others, stripped naked and entered the three-foot-high concrete bunker. Well, there's the teaser, or perhaps something that will attract you, but uh, what I'd like to do today, in the midst of all the mess that the world is in, and uh, wondering who is good and who is bad and doesn't make any difference anymore. I thought Thursday should be a good day to uh, have a, a story of great love, compassion, and heroism. Yeah, love, compassion, and heroism. What a wonderful set of qualities. I would love to be convicted of all three someday. So, that's what the program is going to be about on this Thursday, so I hope you'll join me and stay with it, and perhaps uh, you'll have something to say about it all. I'm Stan Eusted. Interesting ideas. We want you to be able to live a better life starting right now. And the program begins right now. Okay, here we go. And again, full attribution. I do not steal. And uh, this is from an article, and it's called The Sacrificial Love of St. Maximilian Kolbe. And that's spelled K-O-L-B-E. And it's from uh, an organization called The Imaginative Conservative. The Imaginative Conservative conservative, and I'm sure they're having fun with that because usually people who are conservative are accused of not having much imagination. They're kind of stuck in old-fashioned tradition. Well, they're trying to break that down. And uh, the article is written by a gentleman named Bradley J. Berzer. Bradley J. Berzer, and you'll find out more about him as I kind of read the article or perform it Certainly share it, because uh, it touched my heart, and maybe it'll touch yours. Here it goes. As Hillsdale College students approached my desk, on the fourth floor of Delp Hall, several things stand or sit between me and them. Well, first of all, there's a huge desk, of course, but on the desk sits a lamp, some books, and of course my MacBook and a small figurine of a monk, one of his hands broken off. Some of my own knowledge of the figurine itself is foggy, as I no longer remember why his hand is missing. I do know that I purchased the figurine at a nunnery in Ohio many years ago. Okay, the figurine is one of my great heroes, a Catholic saint and priest. I almost always get the same reaction from my students. Typically, they pick him up and say something like, Oh, uh, I like your monk action figure, Dr. Berzer. <laughs> Usually a slight but a sympathetic laugh or giggle accompanies the question as they continue to examine the figure. Oh, do you know who that is, I ask. Hmm? Well, the usual guess is St. Benedict, and that's a, a very legitimate guess, especially since that uh, we teach the rule of St. Benedict to all of our freshmen, and that I have such a fondness for Miller's Canticle for Leibowitz. No, I explain, this man died on August 14, 1941, in cell block 13, the worst of all punishments handed out by the National Socialists in Auschwitz prior to the employment of the ovens 
and the gas chambers. Here's the deal. St. Maximilian Kolbe, a Roman Catholic priest, had been taken prisoner by the Nazis, as had been a vast number of his fellow men, Poles, Jews, Catholics, and Lutherans. Uh, the Nazis seemed to avoid discrimination when it came to state-sanctioned murder. On the last day of July 1941, a prisoner had attempted to escape the terror camp. As punishment, the commandant called out ten random names, the names of those to be executed in retribution for the one man trying to escape. One of the names called was, or belonged, or rather had been forced upon, a husband and a father. As the man pleaded his case, Father Colby came forward and offered his life for the one pleading. The commandant, probably sh rather shocked, agreed. And Colby, with nine others, stripped naked and entered into the concrete bunker. Deprived of food, of water, of light, and toilets, the men survived, unbelievably, for two weeks. Man madness and cannibalism had never overcome them, as the incarnate soul made in the image of Christ, grace pervaded that room. When the commandant had the room searched two weeks later only to find the men and Father Colby alive, he furiously ordered them all to be injected with carbolic acid. The man who removed Colby's body offered a wondrous testimony under oath. Colby, he said, had been in a state of definite ecstasy his eyes focused on something far beyond the bunker, his arm outstretched, ready to accept the death of the chemicals to be injected in him. At this point in the story, the student almost always puts down the figure of St. Maximilian Colby. A little surprised, a little overwhelmed, a little impressed, and a bit of reverence. Yeah, no mere action figure sits on my desk. Well, why do I do that? Well, there sits a representation of a saint, of the 20th century patron of the 205 million men, women, and children murdered by their governments because they were each and every one of them an unrepeatable center for dignity and freedom made for beauty and eternity they were not made for the whim of a governor a bureaucrat a commandant or an ideologue that's quite a story thank you to uh, doctor yes Dr. Bradley J. Berzer from Hillsdale College. Well, that's my story for today. It's kind of a short program, but that's okay, because it just leads me to this very simple comment. <laughs> hey, we're approaching the weekend, and uh, the world is in much of a mess and, of course, we look at the tragedies from the fire in Hawaii to the craziness in politics to the rampant crime and all the things that seem to plague our society in the midst of perhaps too much affluence and too little influence for good. That perhaps we need to remember, take time to remember, that there are men and women, simple men and women, of unbelievable faith, dignity, courage, and the ability even to give up their own life for others. Perhaps we should uh, try and seek them out, befriend them, maybe honor them, and certainly perhaps learn from them. 
There we go. I'm Stan Houston. Simply more than an interesting idea. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'll be right back. Thank you for your time. A simple, what, 10 minutes and 25 seconds as of right now. And I hope it's been helpful to you. Again, why don't you look up the story? It said Maximilian Colby, M-A-X-I-M-I-L-I-A-N Colby, a Polish saint of the 20th century. And certainly a man for all ages, and a man for eternity. And um, again, perhaps uh, you'd like to share with me, I'd love for you, if you've got some of those stories, those heroic stories of people that maybe you even know them personally, or maybe you just heard their story and admire them at a distance. Maybe you actually have a, a figurine, a, a little statue, a, a little monument, to a particular saint. Oftentimes when I uh, speak, I've been known to have a little glass, a little vase, and I have a a little white rose sitting on the platform that uh, is there. And I never say anything about it. I just put it there. And if someone does ask me about it, I may say, well, that's to remember somebody in some group of people who were brave and courageous. Uh, This is in honor of a group called the White Rose Society. This is in honor of some young men and women, brave and courageous, of the White Rose Society. And you know what? I would encourage you right now to put that in your search and see if you can't find the story of the White Rose Society. And then if you have, again, one of those stories, or if you have a little symbol or an icon and you'd love to share that story, that's what this radio program is all about. It's for those people who have something to say. Unlike most of the people on radio and TV today who have nothing to say, you really have something to say that's worthwhile. It's a story of courage, of wisdom, insight, intelligence, good humor, um, of good people maybe even great people, Uh, why don't you share it? I'd love to have you on the program, and you could share your story. Again, reach out to me, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com. Check out my web stage. Here's my only self-promotion, witradio.net, witradio.net. We are in the business, as we say, of helping you reach your audience and bring your message to life. And perhaps like a Maximilian Colby, gain a touch of immortality. Have a good weekend if I don't talk to you before then. Best and blessings. Till next time, bye for now. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love.